Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll solve this problem that appeared in an AITS. So this problem is based on rotational equilibrium, you could say. So we have a solid hemisphere of radius R and a cone of radius H, and they are both welded to each other. The object formed is placed on a rough horizontal surface. The density of a material is same for the hemisphere and the cone. Is So this structure is slightly displaced. So let's say it's displaced by an angle theta. So we have to find the condition for which this object performs oscillations. So let's begin with the analysis. Before beginning, we need to know two facts. So fact number one is that the center of mass of a solid hemisphere is at a distance of 3r by 8 from its vertex. Okay. And similarly, the center of mass of a solid cone is at a distance of is at a perpendicular distance of h by 4 from the base of the cone. So once we are okay with these two facts, we can move on to the problem. So let's say this whole structure is displaced by an angle theta towards the right. Okay, so the situation would look something like this. So there will be a normal force from the ground which will pass through the center of this hemisphere. So first of all, I'll draw a symmetry axis and then the vertical from the ground. Okay, so the structure is going to be something like this. We have displaced it by an angle theta in the clockwise direction. Now the thing is, there are two possibilities that can occur. One is that this, this object will just tip over. Another possibility is that the block will have a restoring torque and it will go back to its equilibrium position and perform oscillations, right? So there are clearly two possibilities. Now, now how do we decide as to what is the situation that's going to happen? Well, let's discuss about that. If the center of mass of this whole system lies towards the left of this vertical line, then the torque of that weight about the axis will be anti-clockwise. But Similarly, if the center of mass of the system lies towards the right of this axis, then the torque is in the direction of theta and this object will tip over. So all we have to ensure is that the center of mass of the system lies to the left, left of this line. Okay, so now let's start to mark the center of masses. So okay, as we discussed earlier, the center of mass of this solid sphere lies at a distance of 3r by 8 from this point O, right? So this is the center of mass of the cm of the hemisphere and similarly i'm going to get rid of this theta now center of mass of this solid cone lies at a distance of h by 4 so this distance is going to be h by 4 and this distance is going to be 3r by 8 okay so now let's mark the mgs so let's say the mass of the cone is mc and let's say the mass of the hemisphere is mh so what is the force on the center of mass it's going to be mh multiplied by g and the force at the center of mass of this cone is going to be mc into g. Now, if the torque due to this force is greater than the torque due to this force, then this object will have a counterclockwise torque and this will go back to the mean position and perform oscillations. So that's all we have to do. What is the torque due to this force? It will be the force multiplied by this perpendicular distance from the axis. So this angle is going to be theta and this distance is going to be 3r by 8 sine theta. Now, what is the mass of the hemisphere? It was given in the problem that the density of both of these objects is the same. So the mass of the hemisphere is simply the density multiplied by the volume of hemisphere, which is 2 by 3 pi r cubed times g. The distance from the axis is 3 r by 8 sine theta. So this moment must be greater than or equal to moment because of this. Actually, it has to be greater because, because if it is equal to, then it's, it'll remain at rest, right? So it has to be greater than the moment due to this force. So mass of cone will be rho multiplied by 1 by 3 pi r squared h into g. And the distance from the axis will be similarly h by 4 sine theta. So after cancelling out all the terms, what we are left with is 3 r squared must be greater than h squared. And or we can say the height h of the cone must be less than root 3 times the radius of it. So this is the condition that needs to be satisfied. Now, if we look at the options, so the condition is H must be less than root three R. So option A says that it will oscillate if H equals R as it satisfies this inequality. Option A is correct. And in the option B, as it violates this inequality, option B will be wrong. It will not have a finite time period. And option C, option C will be correct, but it is more correct if this equality was not here. And option D is just wrong. So the answer will be, answer to this problem will be option A and option C. So I hope you learned something from this video and if you have any doubts you can comment down below and please like and subscribe for more of such content and thanks for watching guys.